Hello Tiger fans, thanks for joining us this week on Tiger Time Out as we've reached the Thanksgiving holiday. We certainly wish you and your family a uh, happy Thanksgiving. Hopefully you get to spend some time with family and different things. And uh, as you get ready for Turkey Day, let's uh, talk about Tiger and Lady Tiger basketball. Mid-South Conference play starts for the two clubs over the last weekend. We visit first with head coach Ginger High Colvin of the Lady Tigers and coach uh, going on the road in league play is mm -hmm. a difficult thing. You uh, were so confident in your team you scheduled just two non-conference <laughs> games uh, to start the season and thought we'll just jump right into it but you get three wins. I know that's hard to do and, and it's a mm. great start to the conference slate. Well, let's go ahead and it's not confidence it's ignorance and I could not find games so uh, I went into that just super stressed, but uh, we were we we're fortunate enough to get those first three road games and three hard road games. And uh, I'm really proud of our kids with how we responded. Still, we talked about it last night in post game. We ha haven't been at home yet, mm -hmm. and um, you know that's tough to go and win the games that that we've won in the Mid South on the road. I'm really proud of my kids. And we'll start <clears> with that <throat> UT Southern game. I know it probably feels like uh, a half century <laughs> right. ago at this point, um, but last Thursday you guys go down to. Pulaski and it's a UT Southern team that we talked about last week mm -hmm. replaced a lot and and different and you never know how that's going to go right. but they were hitting shots early um, that first half was back and forth a little yeah. wild um, they've got some really talented mm -hmm. pieces the second half though you guys were able to pull away we did I feel like um, UT Southern this year is a little more even with with what they do those are the harder teams to guard those are the ones that you have to come out and if you have one or two kids you can focus on Maybe it's easier, but when you have all of those kids, uh, and he does a good job with them, they came out, I think it was a six-point game at the half. Uh, but we've got some veterans on our team that just kind of stay the course, and I felt like the second half we came out and hit some shots and did some things and got some stops defensively that we weren't getting the first half. And a theme for really the entire three-game uh, weekend was the offensive play. What you got out of your post mm -hmm. in right. Caitlin Wilkes and Kayla Luby, all three games, I have to go back and, and figure up the numbers, but they were mm -hmm. terrific, kind of that steadying, right. calming force, and others chipped in when necessary. Yeah. Elizabeth Bertram, Lauren Lee, Bailey Pedigo, Courtney mm -hmm. Pritchett, of course. So it was really a, right. a team effort, and, and you lived off those two in the post. Well, when you have kids like Kayla and Kate that can go in there and score, it really it really opens up things for other players. And um, they've been a great one-two punch for us. Uh, they, they both work extremely hard and, and they're different. We've got a righty and a lefty that come in there. Kate's a, a little more, I can't say finesse, but she's, she's a little more finesse and Kayla's just a, a, a lot more physical with taking it up. And um, so it's, it's different. Uh, teams have to prepare for both of them and um, I'm really proud of how they're helping make our team better. And I know you mentioned offense, but they're helping make us better defensively as well. And I'd be uh, remiss if I didn't mention Matty Boyle had four threes in that yeah. game against UT Southern, which uh, played huge as well. Cumberland University then on Saturday. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I want to say an upstart Cumberland U team. They've got right. some really nice pieces. And this season, you can see mm -hmm. it's different. Yeah. They are a better ball club. Uh, you know, you've talked about mm -hmm. Lindsey Freeman and yes. Elena Rongos and Brittany Miller, and they've got some some pieces that are going to give teams fit. They they got uh, went over Lindsey Wilson mm -hmm. on that Thursday. They knocked off UT Southern right. last night, so you were able to pick them off there at, at home. That's a big win for you guys. That was a big win, and that's going to be a big win for anybody that can travel and uh, and get a win down there. Like like you said, you mentioned those kids. I think Lindsey Freeman is is one of those kids that makes things happen. Ron Ghost is one of the best shooters, a quick shooter. And then Miller, who they didn't have last year uh, due to an ACL tear, is back this year. And then they've added some really good guards. Uh, so one of the most solid teams um, that I've seen in the Scott Blum era. I know Jeremy Lewis put some really good teams on the floor. Uh, but as far as, as talent from top to bottom, this is probably Scott Blum's most talented team. And, you know, we, we talked about Brittany Miller, her brother Brandon, is going to be a lottery pick. Uh, he plays for Alabama. Really? I did so, not know yeah. that. So the, yeah. the uh, genetics and gene pool there right. is certainly strong uh, oh, wow. for Brittany. Uh, then you go to the bigger sports center last night. Let's mm -hmm. talk about that one. Look at the box score here as the uh, the Lady Tigers pick up the win. 87-64, the final score, a career-high 22 points for Caitlin Wilkes, seven rebounds. Pritchett chips in 17 and a ho-hum day for her, six rebounds, a block and a steal, Lauren Lee had 13 uh, coach last night. Caitlin Wilkes could just pitch it up on glass and it was going to fall through for her. Yeah. I mean, she had everything but that buzzer beater at halftime maybe. Um, <laughs> but everything else went in for her. 23 points 
in a matchup of Lindsey Wilson rivalry game, that just doesn't happen right. often. Uh, mm -hmm. That game is, is normally nip and tuck. You guys went back and forth a bit for the mm -hmm. first maybe quarter or so. Right. Then you really found your legs uh, and yep. you run off and hit. We did, and Lindsey's got uh, really good shooters. They can spread the floor out, so they um, – they're, they're a tough guard for us just because they can spread it. Oldham is very long, um, and she Hall can get the shot her shot off very quickly. Uh, their point guard's crafty, so we, we had our hands full with, with our coverage. And like I said, I think our post help let our guards come out a little bit higher and put some more pressure on. That's some th something that we've not been able to do the last couple years, and it's uh, we're getting back to maybe the basis, base, basic of, of what we have used to do with our defense. and. Uh, with the Savannah Gregory's and the, the Madison Shepherds, we can really get up there and, and put pressure on. And um, we're probably going to restat that. I don't think the stats are right. I know the assists aren't right. right. Uh, so we'll go back. I think when we go back, you'll see Lauren Lee's probably got a few more assists, maybe even Courtney. Yeah, and typically when you see the Lady Tiger, you guys aren't right. a team that's going to create your own shot right. a ton. So if you've got yeah. 25, 30 made field yeah. goals, odds are it's going to yeah. be, you know, 15 to 20 assist yeah. at least so uh, we look forward I look forward to seeing seeing the yep. updated numbers on that one the Lady Tigers get a few days off they'll enjoy the Thanksgiving holiday they're not back in action until December the 1st at the Powell Center finally we'll step away come back and we'll look uh, we'll talk about recruiting with the head coach Ginger High Colvin here they've got uh, some young ladies in the fold for next season and uh, we'll ask her some Thanksgiving type questions so stay with us here on Tiger Time Out. Thanks for staying with us here on Tiger Time Out, a Thanksgiving edition as uh, we put a bow on Mid-South Conference, the start of the Mid-South Conference season for the Lady Tigers here. Matt Payton with you as we visit with Ginger High Colvin. And Coach, you, uh, you've you been on the recruiting trail uh, for you guys so often you're able to get a head start on the recruiting mm -hmm. and have a pretty good, uh, good idea of what those classes look like. Yep. Uh, you signed one this week, Katie Chandler from Rowan mm -hmm. County. Uh, I know you're super excited about her. I am. Just um, when Katie came on, on campus and we were able to, get, able to get to know her, I knew she was a fit. You know, a lot of times we'll see kids that are the talent level that we want, the position that we want, but you get to know them and maybe it's not uh, what we think is a fit. I'm, I'm pretty selective with, with who we bring in and who we put with our kids and man, she's a fit. She's just, uh, she is gritty. She's a Savannah Gregory, Madison Shepherd type, dive on the floor, get after it kind of kid. And um, she's, she's, she's very talented offensively, and, and we're just so excited about her. We're excited about the total package that she's going to bring to the table. And, you know, it, it, you got to get them on campus and mm -hmm. get them involved in different things. We've seen this year with like a, a Maddie Nally and Elizabeth Bertram. Right. It's taken a few years to kind of get right. there and, and put it all together and figure mm -hmm. out what it means to be a basketball player right. at this level. Katie Chandler, someone you're excited about, you think can jump in and, and maybe even help next year? I do. Uh, there's, there's, it's a huge transition, and uh, most of the time with girls, it's a strength, th a strength thing. And um, she's, she's very fit. Her dad talked at the signing. She's been big in gymnastics. Her core is very strong, and I think with girls, when you get that strong core, uh, I've had kids come in before that have come in, and Melly Heaton, for example, took a, a summer program and was, was really super strong. Came in and contributed as a freshman. Uh, Courtney, obviously Courtney Pritchett has, but she was a red shirt freshman. But uh, so yeah, there's there's kids sometimes that are just a little bit more developed, and uh, I feel like she can come in and, and be an impact. And that's a, a pretty good Rowan County team. Uh, her teammate going to right. Murray State, so yes. that's a pretty talented group there uh, as well. And then another one that Lady Tiger fans um, will love to know in, uh -huh. in the near future, Reese Estep. Uh, yep. The family ties are strong yes. for the Lady Tiger uh -huh. program. I know she's another one that, that you're tickled to have. I'm really excited about Reese. We're going to have uh, some familiar faces in the stands for sure. Reese is uh, Shannon Wathen's niece and uh, Shannon was obviously a standout for us. I've, I've been able to watch Shannon's little sisters grow up and then uh, obviously, I've known Ray since uh, since she was born as well. Uh, again, she's a tremendous kid, and the thing I like about Reese is her motor is a talking uh, old country term. She's in fifth gear all the time. 
She's never in first gear, second gear. When she steps foot on the floor, she is in fifth gear, and she gets her hands on so many, so many balls just because her motor is running so hot. And I love that. Um, she's 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 going to continue to find herself offensively. Uh, she's battling some knee injuries right now, but she's just that motor just uh, continues to run. And I'm so excited about what I think she's going to be able to bring to us. You guys get a few days off here. I know you you given the team uh, a couple mm -hmm. days to enjoy. Yeah. The holiday, you don't get back in action until the 1st of right. December. They'll welcome in Bethel to the Powell Athletic Center uh, on Saturday. They start with Freed Hardeman on that Thursday, uh, 5.30. And again, the conference has changed those start times. So know, uh, right? for the Lady Tigers, the Thursday games move up a half hour, 5.30 Eastern. On Saturday, they moved up an hour to 1, uh, 1 o'clock Eastern there. So finally, you'll get home and you'll be in the Powell Center. I won't put you through the torture of talking about those important matchups that are coming <laughs> your you. way just yet, but walk me through the next week or so for you guys in preparation. Uh, I know you've let the, mm -hmm. the girls go home right. and, and enjoy the holiday and that type of thing. Well, uh, yeah, they did. We did go home last night because we'd had three hard road games, um, and I know they're tired. I'm tired, and I've not played one second. And uh, so Kayla Luby, for example, has not been able to go home. I think we were all th as thrilled for her after the game last night, knowing that she was getting ready to be able to go home and be with her family over the break. I'm um, bringing their other, the remaining uh, lot of the girls back in on Friday night. We'll run, we'll practice Saturday, we'll practice Sunday, and uh, just get ourselves back in the group. We've still got some kids, Sarah Sutton. I still want to get her back in that in-game mode, get her back in that rotation. and. Uh, and we've got two tough ones coming to Powell, so we've got to be prepared for them. And you were telling me, if you want to know what kind of kid Kayla Luby is, she was worried about not being back Friday right. with the rest of the team. <laughs> uh, you gave her Sunday since the long <laughs> trip to Nebraska, uh, so hopefully she can uh, enjoy that time. And, and a couple, let's, let's do some Thanksgiving okay. questions here. So, ham or turkey? Oh, turkey. Turkey? Yes. Okay. Uh, pumpkin pie, pecan pie, or apple pie? Ooh, probably pecan pie, yeah. Cranberry sauce or no sauce? No sauce. No sauce. Yep. NFL games on Thursday or a nap? I'm from, we we get out. We go outside. Uh, so uh, the NFL games are on. They are on, but there's not a lot of napping that goes on at my place. Even if it rains? No, you're not much gonna, napping. You're just going to weather, weather yeah. in the storm. Yeah, uh, not much napping. Uh, any Thanksgiving memory, just something that you think about, you smile. Growing up, uh, now you know, now yeah. as an adult, anything that, that stands my out My family. You? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm so close with my family, and uh, um, we've mentioned before, my grandparents, um, their farms connect. We grew up a mile apart, so we were always together. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, my dad and his brothers have, have refurbished the old log cabin, and uh, it is... It is running now, so that's where we're going to have Thanksgiving, the cabin that they all grew up in. So that's that's where we're headed tomorrow, and I think it's going to be a good time. Coach, happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. We'll we're thankful you, uh, for you, yeah, Matt. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, and we'll see you uh, next week as the Lady Tigers get back into Mid-South Conference, play their home opener on December the 1st. Uh, come out and join us as they take on Freed Hardeman. That'll be a battle of unbeatens in Mid-South Conference play uh, once they square off next week. Uh, we'll step away, take a time out here, come back and visit with the head coach of Tiger basketball, Brent Vernon, here on Tiger Timeout. Jason, let's go see your room. Thanks for staying with us here on Tiger Timeout. Matt Payton with you as we transition from Lady Tiger basketball over to Tiger basketball. Campbellsville University getting a win last night in Columbia, Kentucky as they knock off Lindsey Wilson College. Brent Vernon joining me and looking dapper as always. I did this uh, twice within the last 24 hours. I showed up last night. Same thing on that the uh, Lady Tiger coaches were wearing today. You and I uh, looking 
the part here in this dress down edition <laughs> of Tiger Time Out. Coach, uh, congratulations Thanks. on the win last last night. I know uh, getting into conference play is always a challenge. There's yeah. no gimmies in this league, and, and we won't spend a ton of time on that opener with UT Southern, a game that kind of got away from you guys early mm -hmm. and maybe as good as UT Southern has played in the last couple of years. They yeah. were uh, excellent last Thursday. They were. You know, they returned all five starters from a, a national tournament team. They, and you, they were just a well oiled machine that night, and, and they they punched us in the mouth, and you know it just sort of the wheels sort of fell off. Now I give our guys credit; we we competed, we we didn't give in, we, but we started really forcing the issue and making some mental mistakes. And because of those mistakes and the way they shot the ball, did it just got away from us. But you can look at the standings now; they've gone on and started three and zero. They they took care of business Saturday, and last night they they went on the road to beat a very good Kermelin University team. So. Uh, you know, I, I do believe two of our first three conference games we were playing probably two of the top four teams in our league. So on the road early, a little bit of an eye opener. Uh, but you know, like you said, came back and uh, got a big one last night to try to get this thing going. You know, there's a lot of things that play when you open uh, league play, and a lot of times guys transferring in or even freshmen, you can play non-conference games, but those conference games, it's different. Yeah. And when you've got Malik Muhammad's and Jay Milburn's and other guys that you've brought in trying to figure things out and learn how to play in this league, it matters. And I thought you were you were left with an interesting decision in that opener against uh, UT Southern. You and Mark kind of look at each other midway through the second half or mm -hmm. so. You've got a game Saturday, another game on Tuesday, both in conference play. Do we run the legs to death? Or do we, you know, kind of throw in the towel, which is mm -hmm. not something you want to do, mm -hmm. but live to fight another day? And, and that's kind of where you went. Yeah, it was tough. You know, you also throw in with those new guys. You throw in someone like Javon Smith getting big minutes who hasn't played in these conference games. Um, and, and it was never really what we considered throwing the towel in. But when you get to a certain point, it's really hard to come back. And, and when you're not playing real well, you have to give some other guys some opportunity. So we did see it as a great opportunity to give some other guys, some younger guys, a chance to get out there and get a taste because we knew at some time we're gonna have to use them and, and they're gonna have to be prepared for it. Uh, but you know, you look at the minutes that Jace and some of these guys have been playing, it comes a time where you have to realize that we need to try to get better through the end of this one, but we still got another game on Saturday and we had to be able to save some legs on, on a travel day. Uh, and our guys handled it very maturely from that standpoint. I thought the guys who came in and that back end really battled and did some good things. And, and when you see that, uh, it gives you a, yourself as a coach and a staff a little more confidence that, not that you didn't have, but you have to see them against some of that to be able to move forward with it. You go to Lebanon, Tennessee on Saturday and, and you you know talked to me a little bit off camera about the physical nature of that Phoenix team. They are kind of a beat you to death, a mm -hmm. physical bully ball at times type of thing. You started out really well. You went punch counter punch with them for about 36 minutes yeah. of that 40 minute ball game. There was a four minute stretch to close the first half. They went on a 15 to two run and you just never could quite claw back into it. But again, a top 20 team on the road, you were right there with them really for the biggest yeah. uh, part of that game. It was just that one little stretch that kind of sank you guys. And yeah, and, and the first couple games we've always talked about, we haven't started off real well. And, and um, going into that game again, it was, okay, we have to get off to a better start. Made a little adjustment in the starting lineup, putting Jerry's key in there. Uh, he's, he's been very solid and really has done a great job giving us a spark. And I think starting him changed it a little bit. And we started off really well. The game was, the first half was a game of run, sort of back and forth, uh, you know, just everybody doing their own thing. 37 all, and they entered, uh, ended on a 15-2 run. Uh, as much as, as not my fault, their fault, I, I needed to probably call a timeout or two during that time. Still, we hadn't been in a game where a run like that had happened, where it was close and then got to that. So uh, I was really confident in our guys playing through it. We got a little rushed. It wasn't that we were taking bad shots, but I think whenever a team is on a run, you have to make sure time and score and how quickly you get that shot because it has to be something that slows the run down. And we never got the, the basket that we needed to really end that run. So uh, looking back, watching the film, I wish I'd taken an extra time out in that. But again, we came back in the second half. We cut it uh, 10 or 9. You know, For the first 10 or 12 minutes, we were leading in that half. We just never could quite get over that hump. They had another little bit of a run that's extended it back, but we did. We fouled and bought, uh, fattled, battled and fought yeah. until the very end and gave ourselves a chance, and I thought we made strides that day. 
uh, you know, knowing that you had the Lindsey Wilson game uh, coming up on, on Tuesday as well, here you are, this one, you're pushing it to the, to the absolute limit. So it was a, a bit of a flip from where you were uh, on a Thursday night. Uh, as a coach, you know, you don't have a lot of time. You don't get to look back a day or two later and then go yeah. back and make that decision. You've got a split second or two mm -hmm. here and there. You're talking about taking timeouts. That has to happen with, before you inbound the basketball right. and those types of things. I mean, it's, just, it's, a, it's a moving target for you as well on the sideline. It is, and I think whenever you're coaching, every team year to year is different. And I've still, I've got a, every game I've sort of gone in with a different philosophy and theory of where I may use a timeout here and there. And one of the things I wanted to do against UT Southern, I never could get to that because I had to burn two or three immediately. Uh, against Kermelin U, I did uh, go with the plan I needed to, but should have burned one another one. And then last night, I thought it, it was sort of perfection, but again, it was us playing well to where it worked out that way. So um, I'm still trying to find out the right way to manage these guys in a game that I think we're getting closer. Uh, if we can get everybody a little more, a few healthy bodies, because a lot of that goes to who's available, who's not, for timeouts can be used for stopping a run, giving some rest and all that stuff. So we're getting closer to what we need to be. Tigers do get that win last night against Lindsey Wilson. We'll step away, take a break here. We'll come back, uh, look at some of the numbers from that matchup and the win over Lindsey Wilson College in Columbia. Stay with us here on Tiger Timeout. <laughs> Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back to Tiger Time Out here on the Campbellsville University Sports Network. Matt Payton with you as we close up this week's show. The Tigers head into battle this weekend. The Lou Cunningham Classic at home. We'll touch on that here in just a moment. But Brent Vernon's club gets a win over Lindsey Wilson College last night. Coach, and we talk about this with Ginger High Call. These rivalry matchups, uh, the close proximity of the two schools, everything that you know about one another and all that stuff, you kind of just – pitch it out the window and you roll the ball out there and it's big boy basketball. Yeah, it is. And you know, something we talked about was, you know, L Lindsay did a very good job last year and got us in two games that we went in with the anticipation we needed and, and should have won those games. Um, you talk about the rivalry, you know, you got new guys here and there. I think last year, Lindsay took this game more serious than we did. Not that we weren't taking it serious, but I think our guys weren't truly committed to Listen, we're 15 minutes away. Uh, it, it is a rivalry. We talked about that a lot on Sunday and Monday after this last weekend, and our guys were really locked in from, from the jump. And, and again, as a coach, we talked about Saturday. You still don't know when you get off to a little bit of a slow start, how are you going to react? And our guys really reacted positively yesterday. Taking a look at some of the numbers uh, from the win over Lindsey Wilson College last night, 70 to 50, the final score. Campbellsville gets the victory, 16 apiece for Malachi. D'Souza and Malik Muhammad. D'Souza with eight rebounds and a block in there. Muhammad 16.6 boards. And Jordan Graham got uh, going from long range, 13 points for Graham, four rebounds, hit a couple of three-point field goals, one of them a rare four-point trip. And, and those are the types of shots that you haven't been able to, to get to go down <coughs> often enough this year, Coach, especially in your conference games. Uh, yeah. Last night, Jordan Graham got going, and, and certainly those two guys down low uh, got to work. Yeah, and, you know, we've made it a, a big effort. We have to give Malik touches, Chandler touches, Jay touches when they're in there. Uh, you know, you got to get uh, Malachi, Jay Key, Jace when he's out. we got to give him touches. We have to go into the post more and more. And we've really made a concerted effort to do that, and I think it's really helped us. Not shot the ball well at all this year. Uh, you know, you can't run from that. But I think last night we were around 45 46% from three. But we were getting – wide open looks. It was not the quick rush threes. It was throw it inside, fan it out, get a shot. Dribble uh, penetration, get two feet into the paint, throw it out, get a shot. And, and the shots even we missed were, were basically wide open attempts that we had guys shooting it that I have 100% con, uh, control and, and faith in making those shots. So everything we were doing from the offensive standpoint was really good last night and we just got to build off of that moving forward. You get Trayshawn Smoots uh, last night finally, and, you know, here early in the morning, you know, Jace is probably at best going to be limited. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and then as the day went on, he just wasn't really right. feeling any better. The good news was you knew you had Trayshawn Smoots was going to try to make an appearance. And, and maybe even at times last night you had him out there more than, than you probably wanted coming off the hamstring injury. It's been about a month yeah. since he's really done much, but he looked pretty good. He did, and it was tough. Um, we, we were hoping 18 to 22, and I think he was at 23. Where I, where I sort of went a little longer was midway through the first half. I, I had him in there for about five or six, and he couldn't finish the first half with the energy that we needed him to. So we did a little better job, I thought, second half of, of putting him out there, getting him a quick sub, and then being able to finish the game. He did a very nice job, though, in his first game. I, you know, he was anxious to be out there. Uh, he, he's very hard on himself. He, he missed some shots that he doesn't think he should ever miss, some good looks from the perimeter. But he, he just he does some things that really settles our team down. He sees the basketball game in, in a different type of pace than a lot of players do. So. Uh, hopefully, hopefully we can keep him healthy and keep him out there because I think he'll be able to get in better shape, be able to get some more minutes out there, and I think he'll just make the game a little easier for everybody on the floor for us. Road win and league play always hard to come by quickly. As we wrap up that, Javon Smith was really, yeah. really, really good. We talked about this last night. Defensively last night, he was, he was special. He was. He was phenomenal. Uh, and, and it's one of those that he's really been hard on himself and, and he's really sort of taken some of his confidence away uh, it's not faltered from his teammates or, or from our staff. You know, we have the the biggest time of faith in him because he's a really good basketball player. He's a competitor. He had some tough matchups defensively last night for uh, really a young man playing in his third ever conference game, and he really rose to the uh, the occasion and, and battled hard. You get the Luke Cunningham Classic this weekend, and I know with all of the conference stuff, you've not really had a chance to look ahead to the University of Health Sciences and Pharmacy of St. Louis, and uh, you'll open with Virginia Lynchburg on uh, on Friday in the Lou Cunningham Classic. The Lindsey Wilson Blue Raiders will come over and take part in that as well. But uh, having the Lou here, uh, I know uh, your dad and, and Lou Cunningham yeah. had some classics. So uh, even though you're, you're a, a Cumberland guy uh, growing up and, and the, the ties that you have there, you're certainly familiar with Coach Cunningham and his career. Absolutely. I, you know, a lot of games go home and, and be disappointed after playing Campbellsville when dad was coaching. And then some games where it was the other way around. But uh, so many uh, memories of those guys battling against each other, you know, from from Van Berry making shots that gave me nightmares as a kid to, you know, Brian Key making a shot that gave Campbellsville fans nightmares. It was just something that uh, there was such a, a respect between my dad and Coach uh, Cunningham and, uh, you know, being able to be here and honor him because he, he's the reason the program is what it is. And it's, it's always a special occasion. Rapid fire Thanksgiving style here, turkey or ham? Turkey. Gravy so on top. In you and Coach. A lot of turkey. Uh, all right, let's go. Uh, pecan pie, apple pie, pumpkin pie. Pecan. All right, I can live with that. And then uh, cranberry sauce, no sauce. No chance. No. <laughs> all right, NFL or a nap? NFL all day. Okay, all right, we, we can live with it. Just anything. But I may crash still. It's well, been, you it, know, it, a lot it, of sleepless it, nights right you now. You can get a cat nap Absolutely. at halftime. Uh, Thanksgiving memory, anything, you know, from childhood, now as an adult with your own kids, anything Thanksgiving stand out to you? Honestly, the only thing that stand out because it's been a constant is basketball. Um, you know, we'll have, we're, we're very fortunate for our guys to have a lot of Kentucky guys where they can actually go home and be with their family, but we'll have some guys over to the house that, that don't get that opportunity, but my, my Thanksgivings have always been spent with 20, 30 people, and it's been uh, coaching staff, some basketball players, and then my family, so uh, it's always a fun time just to be able to, to hang out with those guys, get to see a little bit of a different side of them, and, and just enjoy the time. Coach, happy Thanksgiving. Thanks, Matt. You too. The Tigers in action this weekend, the Lou Cunningham Classic at the Powell Athletic Center. So if you're around and, and nothing to do after all the turkey is settled, uh, come out to the Powell and uh, catch the Tigers 6 o'clock on Friday evening, 4 o'clock Saturday afternoon. Uh, thank you to the head coach of the Tigers, Brent Vernon, uh, for joining us this week. Also the head coach of Lady Tiger Basketball, Ginger Highcall and Matt Payton. We'll see you next time here on Tiger Timeout.